A violent week in Arkansas's capital city. Robbing people, putting guns on people. Ready for change. Anytime anybody loses a child, it affects you as well. The efforts underway right now. Nearly a million dollar payout. A person injured by a drunk driver. He was hit like a speed bump. The case that's drawing in the dollar signs. And they bands, I know when you said bands, I you a coward. A man running for state representative arrested. I'm about to be state representative. So I, I hope okay. you're sure about what you're doing. The biggest cases of the week right now. Through 75 counties and hundreds of investigations, from the most violent crimes to petty infractions, this is Arkansas Crime Watch with Mitch McCoy. Little Rock police officers have had a busy week dealing with violence as the mayor announces a public safety summit to combat crime. Hello and thanks for joining us on Fox16.com. I'm Mitch McCoy from aggravated robberies to homes shot up and homicides. While crime is perceived differently depending on who is talking about it, our Caitlin Reardon is tracking it all. The city is, is going to be what it's going to be. Marcus Jackson grew up in Little Rock. He says crime has always been a problem, but it's just something he's lived with. Summertime, you know, people get a lot more busier, a lot more running around. People get hot, you know, they want food, you know, want money. It's a cycle that's hard to break. You know, you see signs that talk about neighborhood watch, but it's like, is anybody really watching? Do you have you really have your neighbors back? Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. calls crime in the city a top pillar of his administration. If someone feels that this city is unsafe, it's unsafe. And so what we want to do is make certain that we address crime uh, proactively. Mayor Scott says the Little Rock Police Department is finally up to full staff and he's increased police presence in the neighborhoods. His plan to continue to grow the number of officers. As you have more presence within public safety, uh, it curbs that perception that the city is not safe. Jackson remembers when former Sheriff Tommy Robinson took an unconventional approach to fighting crime by spending time hanging out in spots in the community where crime was rampant. He kept a lot of people from going into liquor stores and different convenience stores and things like that, you know, robbing people, pulling guns on people. Jackson says we need to get to the bottom line of why people are committing crime and address that. Even with that being said, you're still going to have a crime. I mean, what can you do? Little Rock police also investigating after an 18 year old was found shot to death last week. The victim has been identified as Justin Bell. We're told a shot spotter activation called authorities to the intersection of 11th and Lewis. This is just a few blocks from the 12th Street police substation. Neighbors say they heard gunshots. Some thought they were fireworks. Anytime anybody loses a child, it affects you as well because your mind goes back to to when it happened to you. Two mopeds were taken from the scene. One was parked. The other appeared to have crashed near a home. Homicide detectives arrested a man in the case. This is the city's 24th homicide. A drive by shooting outside a Little Rock nightclub sends two people to the hospital and damages multiple cars. The owner of Club 428 says they were closed when a car started shooting down Asher and toward a group of about seven people who were leaving his club. Two people were shot, one in the leg, the other in the ankle. According to the owner, a security guard still on the property pulled the two people inside the club and gave them first aid as they were waiting for an ambulance. This is a perfect example of us being closed and violence still happening in Little Rock. Like, you can't stop everything. We're told they do have surveillance video outside the club that police are investigating. The two victims have been released from the hospital. Some cars and businesses nearby were also hit by gunfire. Little Rock police officer Eric Barnes joining us now to discuss some of the latest string of uh, violence. Officer Barnes, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what's the overall concern from police regarding the latest string of violence? When it comes to any violence, one of the biggest things is occurring uh, and we want to make sure that people in all communities feel safe with where they're at. Can you talk a little bit about some of this latest string and, and is there anything specific sparting some of these shootings? Really nothing uh, specific about them and not really linking to each one of them. Uh, a lot of these that we've seen have been disturbance related, uh, kind of a common disturbance to either family, friend, or uh, just a general disturbance that's led up to some type of incident and that's Something that we just want to continue to reiterate is if you see something, say something before it gets to a level of violence. All right, Officer Eric Barnes joining us to talk about the latest string of violence. Thank you for your time tonight.
Crime Watch has obtained dash cam footage of Roderick Talley's arrest. Talley is the man running for state rep and has been the center of the no knock search warrant controversy in Little Rock. The dash cam appears to show Talley not cooperating with state troopers and using foul language toward them while threatening a lawsuit. Arkansas State Police pulled this car over in hope. You can see Roderick Talley in the distance using his cell phone to record the state trooper. It's a few moments later. State police start to question Talley. What's going on? Tally, who's running for the 36th district in Little Rock, says he saw the trooper pull another man over and wanted to film the interaction. I know how traffic stops can go bad, so. Okay, you got your driver's license for insurance on you? You're parked on a public roadway right now, illegal parking. After several moments of asking for a driver's license, Tally is put in handcuffs. I have not, I have not, okay. I have not broken any the way law. You're, the way you're acting right now, you're being detained. Do you want, do, now listen, do, now listen, do you want to identify yourself or not? My name is Roger Tally. Okay. Tally mentions his campaign run several times with law enforcement. I'm about to be state representative, so I, I hope okay. you're sure about what you're doing. I'll be state representative August the 6th. That's when the election is. <clears throat> You want to know who I am? Google me. Roger Talley. Look me up. And my auntie is on the city board here. I, I'm going to eat this up. You can hear Talley express frustration with the trooper's arrest. Sir, I have not violated anything. Like, I don't feel safe being in the back of this crew. It's on his way to jail. Like violating black people's rights. He threatens to sue and accuses the trooper of racial profiling. Talley, racist piece of cops, man. Behind that badge, I know you. When you that badge off, you a coward. Bad f Tally was booked into jail on driving on a suspended license, impeding traffic, and obstruction charges. Tally posted on Facebook he was not impeding traffic and says he's considered public enemy number one. He did apologize for the homophobic language he used toward the trooper. We're moving to North Little Rock where we want to have you look at some of this surveillance footage. It was captured outside of a gas station. Police say these people stole several items out of the van that you see right there. You see that person walking right up, taking a sneak peek. This happened in the 600 block of Lake Avenue. Police are also searching for a red SUV. You see it right there that was seen driving away in the video. If you recognize the people or that van, you're asked to call the North Little Rock Police Department. A hearing seeking damages for a hit and run victim, the driver who was convicted of her fifth DWI after hitting and badly injuring a man in Jacksonville in February of 2018, ordered to pay big bucks. The judge awarded the victim $900,000 in damages, but both he and his attorney say it's a much larger issue about preventing repeat offenders from putting others at risk. If I would have seen her, I probably could have dodged her or tried to, you know, get out the way or something. Jalen Anderson remembers that February day. He was out for a run when his life changed forever. You know, she hit me from behind. So, you know, it wasn't, I couldn't move or, you know, dodge anything. And uh, I just felt pain instantly. Anderson was run over in Jacksonville near Papito's Mexican restaurant. The driver, Sharon Shin, was drunk. It was her fifth DWI at the time. And um, reports from witnesses stated that he was hit like a speed. Bump. Meredith Moore, Anderson's attorney, says in addition to paying for what he lost, they're also seeking punitive damages. It makes an example out of somebody that is continuously taking part in this kind of um, unlawful activity so that hopefully it keeps somebody else from doing it in the future. Moore says Arkansas is high on the list of states with repeat offenders for DWIs. You know, legislation is showing that they are trying to, uh, you know, make a difference in stopping this. Um, um, but I think we're still a ways away as evidenced by this that only happened about a year ago. For people who, who, who do drink and drive and you know you don't think it's a problem, um, it is easier today to order a Lyft or do Uber, you know, uh, catch a ride home, wake up, uh, Lyft the Uber again to go back and get your car. Shin was sentenced to six years in prison but only served a few months of that sentence. Moving to your crime tracker in Springdale, where police there have busted two businesses for illegal gambling. Authorities served a search warrant on King's Corner and King's Express. Police say the owners have been warned more than once about state law violations. The investigation found players used cash that turned into points on slot machines. If the player won, they would turn in their tickets at the register for cash. This is how police say they found out. From a robbery that happened back at the end of April, where somebody came in here and hurt, you know, used the games here. They were able to get some cash 
from those proceeds, and somebody followed them out of the store and ended up robbing them down the road uh, whenever that, after that happened, and stole the money from them. And that really piqued some interest in us that we're thinking, we need to look into this and see what we can do to shut this operation down. From victim to alleged suspect, Springdale Police and ABC agents are working this investigation. In Izzard County, man recovering after being shot multiple times, the sheriff's office says the shooting happened early last week. That was Sunday morning, about one week ago in Horseshoe Bend. They say 30 year old Mitchell Dunkel was found with multiple gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital. An hour and a half later, deputies arrested 61 year old Jerry Lynn Williams in Mountain Home for the crime. Formal charges have not yet been filed. We're moving to Bryant, where the police department there is investigating more than a dozen car break ins on the north side of the city, and we're told as many as five teens could be involved here. Authorities shared this video in hopes of catching the suspects. We're told the suspects were caught on camera going through unlocked cars in the Andres Place neighborhood Tuesday night. If you know these people, if you can help out in this case, you're asked to call Bryant Police. North Little Rock police are investigating a burglary turned to arson in a Rose City neighborhood. A neighbor spotted smoke coming out of the house on Saunders Drive around 1030. They tell us the homeowner had just moved in last weekend and wasn't at the house at the time. There were three fires set inside and it's believed only the TV was taken during this burglary. We're moving to the mug of the week where Sandra Blenden is taking that award, if you want to call it that. She was booked at the Pulaski County Jail last week. She's facing several charges, and, and bear with me here. It's quite the list. Those charges include failure to stop or yield, fleeing, hindering apprehension, or prosecution, not displaying proper lights for a vehicle, refusal to submit to an arrest, and, of course, speeding. You can't forget that one. We want to remind you all of the suspects you've seen tonight are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. And remember, if you have any information on any of these cases that we talked about tonight, you are asked to call your local police department. And as always, we want to leave you with Arkansas's most wanted. These individuals are being hunted by Arkansas Community Correction right now. If you see them, call 911. Have a safe week, and I'll see you tomorrow night on Fox 16 News at 9.